Well, today we actually get to write some code. We are going to start writing your first C Sharp class. Now, we will not finish it today, but we will at least start it and work on it over the course of the next few days. Now, we can create a C Sharp code file very easily. All we have to do is right click where we want to put that file. In this case, it's going to be our project, but if we had a folder within our project, we could just right click on our folder but we don't have one, at least yet. We will add one today. And then we can go to add, and then from these options, we could choose new item, and that will give us a dialog box that will list everything, and then we can pick you know, what type of code file that we want. But if we go down to class, that just is a shortcut. It pulls up the same dialog box, but it defaults to class. Now we typically usually always want to put a single class inside of its own code file. That just makes things a little bit easier to maintain, especially with a project with many, many different classes. But we can define a class just basically anywhere that we want, as long as it is a C Sharp code file, and as long as it's not within another class's method. But we can define a class inside of a class if we wanted to. But we're not going to worry with anything like that today. We are just going to create a simple class. So I'm going to choose class here. And you can see that class is automatically defaulted, and it's automatically giving us a name for our code file. We want to name our code file to match the name of the class, and we are going to write a class called person to represent an individual person. So we would want to name this file person, because that just makes it easier if we know that we want to do something with the person class, make some modifications to it or whatever, if we have a file called person, then that makes it really easy to locate that class and get into the file and start working. So I'm going to name the file person and click add, and this will create a class file for us. And Visual Studio automatic, automatically created a class for us, class person. Now, yes, that is extremely easy, but you know, we are doing this to learn, so let's get rid of everything here, and then we'll just go through it piece by piece. You define a class with the class keyword, C-L-A-S-S, -S, and you can see IntelliSense is automatically giving us that, a space, and then the name of the class, person. Now, in the .NET framework, it's convention to name your class with an uppercase letter. So while it's perfectly valid to create a class with a lowercase person, that doesn't follow the convention. And convention isn't rules, but it's always good to follow conventions. Now, the convention is to use Pascal case. And that means if you have multiple words that you want to use for the name of your class, then you would use a capital letter for each of the beginning letters of the different words. So instead of person, if we wanted to have a class called person of interest, we would capitalize the O of of and the I of interest, and that is Pascal case. There are other casings that we use in C Sharp and .NET, which we will cover whenever we come across those. Now the only other thing we need with a class definition is the opening curly brace and the closing curly brace. It's a block of code that anything we define or put inside of that block of code is going to be considered part of the person class. So any method, any property, anything that we put inside of this block of code is going to be part of the person class. Whenever you define a class, you want to put it in a namespace. A namespace is just a naming container. It protects your class from a naming collision with another class because we can have multiple classes called person, but as long as they're in a different namespace from one another, other, then there's no confusion as to which uh, person class we want to use. It's a lot like our first name and last name. My name is Jeremy McPeak, and there are a lot of people with the first name of Jeremy, but it's my last name that kind of sets me apart, and there are other Jeremy McPeaks, but for the most part, if you were to go to any of my friends, and I grew up with three Jeremy's, and if you went to one of our friends and said, how's Jeremy doing? They're going to ask, well, which Jeremy are you talking about? I know four. 
But if you say, well, how's Jeremy McPeak doing? Then that person knows, hey, I know who you're talking about. I'm going to answer your question. So a namespace is just a way that we can prevent naming collisions with other classes of the same name. And a namespace is really easy to create. You just type the word namespace, and you can see that IntelliSense is just giving us namespace. And then we just need a namespace. Now, typically, you want to use the namespace of your project. So my first project. And then there's a set of curly braces. And anything defined inside of these curly braces are going to be inside of the my first project namespace. In fact, let's look at program.cs and we can see the same thing. We have namespace, my first project, and then there's a class called program that is, you know, the actual program that resides within that namespace. So, the class program and the class person are both in the same namespace. So, we can actually go ahead and create a person object person equals new person. Now, something else about casing. Variables typically begin with a lowercase character. And then if you have other words inside of that variable name, they begin with an uppercase. So, you know, person of interest again would look something like this. And this is called camel casing. Variables are camel cased. And it, it's perfectly valid to, you know, use an uppercase letter for a variable, but, you know, convention is to use camel casing. Going back to namespaces, we have a single namespace, my first project, but we can actually add other levels of namespaces. We could add something to better organize our code. And this is something that's very common. If you have a set of data types that are related to one another, but they're not related to other data types, you can create a deeper namespace to store those data types in. And it's just a great way to organize your code. So let's go ahead and add that for our, our new uh, person class. And to add on to the namespace, all we have to do is specify our namespace, and then a dot, and then whatever name we want to use. I'm going to say that this is my first data types. So any other first data types that we create, we can create inside of this namespace. But th there's a problem. If we go back to program.cs, we see red squigglies. And that's because the person class is no longer in the my first project namespace. It's in my first project dot my first data types. So if we want to specify that person class that we have created, we have to specify those namespaces as well. So my first project dot my first data types dot person and IntelliSense makes that a little bit easier, but we have to replicate that with a constructor call. And you know, that's not acceptable to me. But we can get rid of the my first project because we are in the my first project so that's kind of our starting point so we can just specify my first data types still that is not desired at least in my opinion so let's go ahead and get rid of that and we are going to use a using statement now i'm sure you have noticed these using statements and wondered what they do it basically says i want to use this namespace well i want to use the data types within this namespace without ever specifying this namespace ever again. So to do a using statement, you just use using, and then whatever namespace that you basically want to import. And in our case, we do my first project dot my first data types. And then we can see instantly the color coding changes and the red squigglies go away. And we can now access that person class without having to type all of those namespaces. Now, there's another way that we can do this. Instead of putting using my first project dot my first data types, we can get rid of the my first project and stick it inside of the namespace. And then anything within this block of code will use this using statement. And of course, outside of this block, 
that is no longer valid. So we would have to specify that again. So the majority of time, whenever you use a using statement, it's going to be at the top of the file because that way it is used with all of the code regardless of how many namespace blocks you have. So let's add my first project. And there we go. Most of the time, we are not going to write a class from scratch. We are going to add a class file to our project and let Visual Studio create everything needed for that class to survive. And that is the file for that class, the name of that class, and Visual Studio can also create the namespaces for that class. Just like we use namespaces to organize our code, we can use folders to organize our code files, and Visual Studio will pick up on that and generate the namespaces based upon the folders that our files are created in. So let's go to our Solution Explorer. Let's right-click, Add, and then Folder. And then we are going to create a folder called My First Data Types. Press Enter. And then we will right click on that folder, Add, Class, Person. And then Visual Studio has created a C Sharp code file for us. It has our class person. It also has the namespace are automatically set for us. So we can use folders to organize our code files just like the namespaces organize our code. So there's basically a one-to-one -one relationship between the code inside of our files and our files on the file system. Now, before we do anything else, we need to get rid of the original person class that we wrote. So let's right-click on that and delete because we don't want any more confusion whatsoever. And we are going to uh, just call this done for the day. Tomorrow we are going to start adding some methods to our class and a few fields as well because we need to add some data to our person class. So we will get to have some more fun tomorrow. See you then.